It's been talked about for decades. But building a very fast train in Australia hasn't featured in this election campaign. Although we should note there is a registered party called the Bullet Train for Australia. That's right. And there is a proposal, of course, to build a high-speed rail system linking Sydney to Melbourne via Canberra, which would carry passengers at about 350 kilometres an hour. But even that may be considered snail's pace if entrepreneur Elon Musk builds his Hyperloop, which would travel at 1,300 kilometres an hour. Is that realistic? Train spotter Dr. Carl tells us. Providing you can move them there quickly at not much slower or similar to air travel, sure, a ground-based form of transport would be fine. And so he's got sort of like pods or capsules where you know, 10, 20 or 50 people get inside and then go zip at speeds of up to the speed of sound almost. But, so this is in a vacuum tube, is that how it works? There, there's different versions. Uh, if you, obviously if you've got a bit of a vacuum tube, you can make it move a lot faster. Uh, if you've got air in a way, it's harder of course. But you can still get very high speeds with relatively standard technology. So for example, um, trains are pretty fast as is. You can get 100, 100 50 kilometres per hour. If you go for still with rails, you can go to the Japanese system where they've got um, the Shinkansen. And I've been on the maglev. You've been on the maglev? No, this is uh, using magnets. Magnets. So it hovers a... just yeah. above the rail. And yeah. there, there's a game that you play. And what you do, this is the one coming out of Shanghai Airport, is that you're in this thing doing 450 kilometres per hour. Right? And the game that you play is you sit on the side of the train facing the uh, where, where, where the oncoming train will come at a closing speed of 900 kilometres per hour. And you press your cheekbone up against the window glass and you have your camera on the window sill and your finger is right on the camera button. And your job is to take a photograph of the oncoming train. And this is what happens. Firstly, there's a thunk and the glass shifts, maybe half a millimetre and so it goes thunk. It doesn't hurt, you can feel it's a definite thunk against your cheekbone. Then you're conscious that there was a whir of light and then thirdly, your finger hasn't moved one bit. <laughs> you missed the train. It was, meanwhile, between Sydney and Melbourne uh, in Australia, uh, as the train goes through Wagga, it has to slow down to 5, 10, 15 kilometres per hour because they haven't done the infrastructure. And if you're talking about, once again, Sydney, the big capital city, Sydney North, Sydney South, the trains are slower now than they were in 1930 because they haven't put the money into infrastructure. So we've got a in whole In fact, you could get out thing. and walk and take well, a photo. <laughs> Yeah, you'd still be quicker. Well, I do love trains. They're not as fast as they used to be. And the thing is, it's because of the way our society has gone with economics and so-called hidden externalities. It's a messy system. All right. Well, as far as rail is concerned, it obviously works in high-density areas. We've seen it work for years in Japan. Mm. It works in Europe. But in countries like Australia, Canada, maybe even the United States, is it feasible, uh, particularly with this technology they're using? We, we look at the Australian example, for instance, they want to build a high-speed train between Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne, mm -hmm. which is travelling, what, top speed of 350 50, k's an hour, which maybe you get to Melbourne in three and a half hours. Yeah. Is that going to look like a steam locomotive in comparison with some of this new technology that's coming through? Um, almost certainly not. Um, for me, it was a real big surprise to discover that, number one, Sydney, Melbourne is one of the top five busiest airline runs in the whole world and has been for the last 15 years, you know, five, four, three, five, four, it oscillates up and down. And when they had one between Barcelona and Madrid, they brought in a high speed run. That used to be Barcelona, Madrid, one of the top five airline runs in the world. When they brought in a high speed run, railway lines, suddenly the demand went down and they didn't need to have a second airport. So with regard to Sydney, Melbourne, firstly, Sydney, Canberra. The number of passenger trips each year, Sydney, Canberra, Canberra, Sydney, by road and rail and air and pogo stick and car and on the back of a dinosaur is 10 million. I was astonished. That is such a large number. It can easily support from a financial point of view on that narrow run alone, purely a high speed train. And then to push it through to Melbourne, easy again. Okay, but what sort of high speed train? Is, ah. is feasible. If we look at the Hyperloop, I mean, is that feasible? You're saying as long as it has uh, a certain number of passengers to carry to yes. make it economically viable, fine. But what about the technology? Does it work? Um, we've had vacuum uh, operated railway lines under New York about a century and a quarter ago. So we can make it work and you have to then go through all of the numbers. Now, on one hand, it's well known that you can fake the numbers any way you want, depending on what your starting assumptions are. But Elon <coughs> Musk, uh, he, I, I don't think he'd be as stupid 
or irrational business person. So he did the SpaceX, which is the first private spacecraft to be able to deliver cargo up to the International Space Station. And he did the Tesla car, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So these are two based on secure business models. I'm not an economist. I haven't been privy to the information. But going by his rate out of two, of two out of two, I'd be willing to bet he's done his numbers properly. But if you're going to compete with the airlines to get people there quickly uh, and safely, how does the Hyperloop stack up with a conventional uh, very fast train and the maglev? I mean, what's the, what's the um, top speed of the maglev, for instance? Uh, I've been in it at 450. Okay, but we're, the Hyperloop is looking at, at 1,300 kilometres an hour. Because there's no atmosphere, you can go faster than the speed of sound. So if he's done his numbers, you need to follow through all the technology, uh, and the new technologies will have to be invented. But if he's done his projections correctly, it looks like we've got something that can beat airlines. And that's all to the good, because um, airlines are not that efficient in terms of fuel burning. So we want and you've got the problem of trying to get to the airport, going Go through security, customs, if the case may be. Take or your shoes or... off, take your belt off, yeah. yeah. Whereas with an aeroplane, you just get, with a train, you just get on it. I love the trains. Dr Carl, thanks very much. Thank you.